All right, folks, good afternoon and welcome from Kinder Farm Park here in Severna Park, Maryland. Welcome to Admiral TV, MIAA B Conference baseball action between the visiting AACS Eagles and your Severn Admirals. Mr. Maggard alongside. John McCone. So we're, uh, we're keeping the trend up, some student broadcasters helping out. Um, John Esposito, uh, wherever you are, um, <laughs> he's here in spirit. I don't know what, what happened with him, but he'll be here sometime. If people know Esposito, that, that's par for the course. Um, so anyway, um, ACS coming in today with a 5-9 record, 3-4 and four in conference play. Your Admirals also 5-9, and 4-3 and three in conference play. It's going to be a good one, folks. Um, the Admirals, so the, the B Conference is broken up into two divisions. Last year, ACS and Severn were in the same division. This year, they're in opposite divisions. So this is the only time that these two teams will be meeting this year on the Diamond. Um, so we'll go ahead and introduce the starting lineups as the umpires uh, meet at home plate with the coaches. Um, umpires, I think, may have thought it was a 4.15 start as opposed to a 4 o'clock start, thanks to some intel uh, received from one of the seven parents. But hey, anyway, we'll go ahead and get it started. So uh, starting lineup first for your admirals. Leading off in center field is Fletcher Warner batting second and doing the pitching. Matt Fisher, the southpaw senior, uh, junior, I should say. Batting third, the left fielder, Ben Campion. Hitting cleanup, the shortstop, Aiden Shadlick. Batting fifth and doing the catching, Brendan Shadlick. Uh, batting sixth at first base is Caden Blink. Batting seventh, the third baseman, Sean Ward. Batting eighth, this, this, was a, this was a new one. So batting eighth, designated hitter is Jack Boyer. Boyer getting the start at DH today. He's going to be hitting in place of the right fielder, Max Barney. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Andy Blank, freshman for the Admirals. The Admirals will be taking on uh, facing Jacob Crisanto, a junior transfer from Indian Creek. He's 2-3 and three on the year, 17 innings, 25 hits, 27 runs allowed, but only 11 which are earned, 3 walks and 17 strikeouts. He's thrown 61% strikes with a 4.53 ERA on the year. And then the lineup that Matt Fisher will be facing. So Fisher, this is his eighth appearance, fifth start for the Admirals. 21 and two-thirds innings, 22 hits, 13 runs, 9 earned, 11 walks, 22 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 262 off the southpaw with a 2.91 ERA. The lineup that Fisher will be facing this afternoon will be a catcher leading off Andrew Hammond. Batting second, the shortstop, Ryan Jones, a big power threat for the Eagles. Hitting third, the third baseman, Sawyer Shepard. In the cleanup spot, doing the pitching, Jacob Crisanto, the junior transfer from Indian Creek. Batting fifth, the center fielder, freshman, Robin Cobb. Batting sixth, the second baseman, freshman, Stanley Matthews. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, freshman, Matthew Fleming. This is only five career bats. He'll be hitting for the first baseman, Robert Bell. Batting eighth, the left fielder, Noah Beal. And batting ninth, the right fielder, Griffin Smith. So, ground rules have been established. The teams are in their respective huddles. We are about to get underway here from Kinder Farm Park. And we should be in for a great game this afternoon. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful 82 degrees. You know, with this, this uh, Mideast weather, you never know what you're going to get. Um, Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic, yes. <laughs> Mideast is on the other side of the, of the globe, I think. Somewhere in there, yeah. <laughs> We're, wherever we are, we have good weather. That's... Yeah, that's, we, you get all four seasons within the course of a, of a spring month in the Mid-Atlantic, that's for sure. That's right. Um, but yeah, so Fisher getting under a way here. Going to see if we can get some readings on him this afternoon. Last appearance, he was sitting... Um, he was sitting mid-upper 70s. He actually topped to 80 on one pitch. Um, that one had a nice sound as it hit off the backstop. Um... But yeah, so Fisher, junior softball, he actually uh, started the game against Gerstel on Wednesday. Um, went five and two-thirds innings, gave up six hits, three runs, walked three, struck out five. He also helped his cost of the plate going two for three with an RBI and an intentional walk. So he's hoping to have similar success here on this beautiful Monday afternoon. Yeah, and Matthew Fisher, he's really been uh, – great for this team this year uh definitely helped propel the admirals uh to some of their victories so it'll be exciting to see what he can do against uh this uh aac aacs lineup especially uh going through their uh first four uh leadoff batters 
Yeah, they're the top four of their lineup. We haven't mentioned their batting averages just yet, but the the, the Eagles are hitting 251 as a team. Um, but their top four hitters are all hitting above that mark, and their bottom five batters are all hitting below that mark. That's right. Um, so definitely um, some work to navigate around as he works through the top four, and that's going to lead off the game with the catcher, Andrew Hammond. Hammond, the 311 hitter on the year, three doubles, five RBIs, team high nine stolen bases. It is an absolutely beautiful afternoon. It is 83 degrees here from Kinder Farm Park as we're about to get underway this afternoon. It looks like first pitch is going to be around 4.06 p.m., maybe 4.07. Let's see what it's going to be. As Brendan Chadlock, Severin's catcher, exchanges pleasantries with the home plate umpire, Hammond steps in, and we are underway. So before the first pitch is thrown, um, ACS's head coach uh, forgot the NFHS rule that all coaches, all coaches on the field have to have helmets on. He's got a helmet, he's properly equipped, and now we are about to be underway. As Fisher comes set the wind in the pitch. Fastball at 78 miles per hour, four, ball one. And here's our other commentator, John Esposito. Uh, chat. Showing up just in time for the start of the game. Fashionably late. It's my mistake. Ball two, fastball taken upstairs, 77, and the count's 2-0. Oh. That one foul of the way, 77 miles per hour, the count, 2-1. and one. Notice the first couple pitches have kind of been up in the zone. He's One of the key successes he had against Gristel last game was being able to navigate in and out, see what the game plan is for today. That one just below the knees, fastball at 78, and the count's three and one. So I wonder if the game plan today is to try to mix up down as opposed to high low, or inside outside, but we'll see. Ball's head out deep into center field, chasing it as Fletcher, it bounces off the wall. Throw comes into the shortstop. That is a very loud double to the deep part of the park, about 360. That one goes for Andrew Hammond, his fourth double of the season, and the Eagles have their leadoff man on in scoring position. Yeah, you know, as we mentioned before, it's going to be crucial that the Admirals can navigate this top half of the lineup as AACS has uh, very strong batters. Went through the yeah. So Ryan Jones stepping in, 429 hitter, six doubles, th triple, three home runs, their biggest power threat. As there's a pitch inside from Matthew Fisher. Rounder to short. There's the throw. And that's an out of first. Yeah, you know, it's good to get, um, for the Admiral, it's good to get uh, those hitters away without getting on base, especially as that is um, AACS's uh, best hitter by average. Catcher visiting the mound, though. It was a nice play there by, by Shad, like to backhand that. And that was a, what we would call a very unproductive out. So the ball was hit in front of the runner. So the runner on second with no one behind him, he had the option to either freeze or, or try to advance. If he advanced, he'd be a dead duck at third base. So he had to freeze and hold. And so Shadley comes up firing, gets the out, and throws a hard strike over, and the runner at second has to remain. So the runner does not advance, an unproductive out for the Eagles. Here's the pitch now from Fisher checking second. So Shepard, 314 hitter, double a home run, three RBIs on the air.
Here's the pitch from Fisher. Fastball outside, strike. 76 on that one. Yeah, and you can see a lot of movement there from Fisher. Great pitch to Evans Arsenal. Yeah, it had a lot of they had a lot of horizontal ride to that. Absolutely. Fisher checking second. Close, but he's safe. Red line situation already early in the game. You know, leadoff man gets on, gets the ground out there, but now he's going 3-4 in the lineup now. He's got to really work hard to get out of this inning. Here comes the pitch now. Pop-up, infield. Falling towards Shadlack and he catches it. Nice fly out there. Had a lot of hang time. It did. Yeah, it's all shed like they're backing up for a while. And if you didn't hear him, little kids who were watching this, you yelled, I got it, I got it. You could hear it clear as day. So when on a pop-up, you call it, and you call it loud enough so people can hear it. So it was a nice job, fundamental-wise, by Shad like there to get the second out of the inning. Love that. Something I tell my son all the time. Fisher checking second. So... Opposing starting pitcher Jacob Crisanto digs in the junior transfer from Indian Creek. 256 hitter on the year with two doubles and 10 RBIs. Pitch from Fisher here. Swing, Swing and a miss. That was his fastest pitch of the day right there. Tied for his fastest pitch, 78 on that. Yeah, that's right. Fish, uh, he topped out at 80 uh, in his last outing. has been... Throwing some heat to get us started here. Fisher steps off. It's a lot of step offs, don't you think? Definitely. Seems, seems like he's really thinking about that runner at second. Just pitch from Fisher. Ball inside. Excellent work there by Brendan Chev, like to slide and block that one, not try to reach and stab. Kept it in front, directed it in towards the base where the th throw would have been made if the runner tried to advance. Nice job from the sophomore. Yeah, Brendan Shadlack's um, been great behind the plate uh, for the Admirals. Here comes the pitch from Fisher. Inside, runner from second advances to third. So that tells me something. That tells me they've picked up something on Fisher. Because normally you wouldn't try to steal third and potentially be the third out of the inning at third base. That's usually one of those holy grail or holy commandments of baseball. You don't commit the first or third out. From Fisher. Ball of, outside. Of the, you don't commit the first or the third out of the inning at third base. That's right. So they must have felt really confident. They must have something on Fisher in terms of a pick or a tell that they can that they know he can get, get a move on. So. Yeah, especially as a southpaw, it'd be hard for him to make that rotation over to third. Inside ball. Runner walks. So they're going to courtesy run for the pitcher. They're going to courtesy run with number 23. Nope, that's the pitcher. They're not going to courtesy run. Take that back. They could if they wanted to, but they're not going to. Sounds like the guy they wanted is actually the guy that's DHing for that. Yeah. Pitch from Fisher now. Swing and a miss. 74 on that one. He's one of three consecutive freshmen in the starting lineup in five, six, seven for the Eagles. Pitch from Fisher. Ball. Cobb hitting 238 on the year. No doubles, a triple, no homer, six RBIs. Fisher takes a look and throws it. Swing and a miss. A 77 on that one. Fish bringing the speed back up. High cheese right there. That's right. Challenged him, kind of let her belt high there. He went chasing. He got nothing. Yep. Fisher. 
and uh, and the runner shot. goes. Fisher steps off. He's in a pickle. They toss it home for the out. Oh, oh wow! There it, they, there it is. Beautiful play. Great play. Beautiful play by the Admirals there to shut him out. Yeah. For the inning. Shad like had to reach down as soon as he got that, just to tag the runner in time. Good for Dangerous, the Admirals. but that is Matthew Fisher's middle name. Good for the Admirals to get out of that inning with no runs. So, yeah, no runs, one hit, no errors. With a runner gunned out at home, only one runner left on base. We're through a half inning here from Kinder Farm Park. AACS 0, Severed coming to bat. And we are back here at Kinder Farm Park coming off of top half of the first inning. Marked yeah, by, marked by a, a great play by Brendan Shadlack. Uh, you know, that throw from Fish was a little high. Shadlack did a great job of getting that ball immediately and getting the tag down. Saved a, a run for the Admirals. First and third situation, early steal by the runner on first. Fisher was able to read it just in time, toss it home for the out. And that was good advanced scouting from, from Coach Starr because ACS has only scored three runs their last three games, so he figured that they might try to do things to scrape across a run early and do something something to that effect. They were well prepared for that. Fletcher Warner leading off here. Comes the pitch. Bunt attempt. Fletcher Warner, he's been great for the Admirals this year, batting uh, 426. Strike. Uh, serves as one of the best averages uh, in the MI double A. So it'll be exciting to see what you can do here. Santa with the pitch here, swing, grounder. It looks like he's throwing about 77, 78 from what we've seen fastball wise in terms of the warm ups and so far to start. Here's a pitch from Prasanto. There goes. And there's a steal for Fletcher. Fletcher sliding in. Called safe at second. Called safe at second. Beautiful steal. That was. It's a fast little kid. Very, very close play there at, at second. Uh, good from Fletcher to get down there, slide, make the tag a little bit harder. 15th seal of the year, but that was 81 on that fastball called strike two. Yeah, that's uh, the fastest pitch we've seen today. Chris Hanto taking a look at Fletcher on second. So Fisher right now probably thinking, I got to hit something behind the runner, hit something to the right side, make a move up to 90 feet, get to third with less than two out, or do something more. But the minimum, you're looking at it behind this runner here. Chris Hanto at the triple shake off. Does he have more than three pitches? Uh, it makes you wonder. <laughs> <laughs> he shook his head a lot of times. Could we see a coveted knuckle ball? He's going to go with the knuckle curve riser change. <laughs> oh, pass ball here. Bounces off the catcher's foot. Fletcher rounding the third. And he's just to get Fletcher in scoring position, scoring position on third base. And that's a quick hit. That guy can capitalize off 
just about any mistake here. Exactly what the goal of the Admirals is. So as mentioned before, with ACS having scoring issues, they're bringing their infield in in a scoreless 0-0 bottom of the first right now. They're playing their infield in trying to protect the run. Yeah, you know, that, that really does speak to um, their scoring over the last Pitcher couple Pitcher Santo here, swing. Foul Long off. foul by Fisher down the third baseline. Yep. So Fisher's got to be looking to put something in play here, not something in the pop-up range with something driven or at least a ground ball to the right side. Um, in addition to that, you know, Crisanto, he's got to be thinking, what can be my best pitch? What is my filthiest pitch that I can throw here to try to get a swing and a miss? Yeah, in this 2-2 in this situation, I'm sure ACS would love to see it out here. Pitch from Crisanto here. Now Swung looks like a Matt. sinker, but that's crushed. And to no, – that's caught by right field. Fletcher tagging up. Throw home. Hey, Fletcher so. scores. Fletcher Warner with the first run of the day. And that will and that's beautiful. Matthew Fisher is sixth RBI, sixth RBI on the season. So the sack, unfortunately, right at him. Yeah. Uh, has happened sometimes for the Admirals where they've been hitting the ball very well just – uh, to the opposing team. Right at him. Yeah. Pitch from Crisanto here. Strike. 68 on that breaker. Pitch from Crisanto here. Foul ball. How are you, bud? How's that in trouble? That's a, it's 82 on that fastball. Yeah, that's. You doing all right? That's uh, another fast pitch. Um, as here we have Aiden Shadlack, the switch hitter. He'll be batting, um, batting lefty against this right-handed pitcher. Fun fact: Aiden Shadlack hit a homer against Mount Carmel inside the park back on March 28th. That's outside, 64. That home run against the against the Cougars was Severn's first home run in 711 days. It's a long time. Maybe we'll see one again today. So very patient. A couple close pitches that Shadlick's had a good eye taken just off the plate, and the count's gone from 0-2 to 3-2. Yeah, you know that's good patience there from him. Pitcher Crisanto hits that, and that's Threw down. Out. Through and to center, it's rolling. Fielder by center field, and that's a clean single from Shadlai. And Shadlai, that's his 12th single on the year. Zachary Starr is getting behind Coach Starr getting, getting on Shadlai a little bit, saying that should have been a double out of the box. Because that ball out in left center, I, I don't know about your yards, but it's, it's pretty lush out there. It that, is. That, that ball, it was hit hard, and it died. <laughs> it got caught up in that grass. It took center a while to get it. Yeah. yeah. I am yeah. a veteran when it I'm comes a, to I'm this. A, I'm a rookie of the, the Admiral TV broadcast as Shadlack, Brain Shadlack sitting uh, 351 in the year. So one of the one of the Admiral's best hitters. Richard Crisanto, and there's a steal from Shadlack, and here's a throw from the catcher. He's down, down. safe, and it's fast. He's thinking about third. So that third strike there from Brendan Shadlack, who that, got out. That That's your traditional strikeout. Two, six, four, three, put out at first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, usual elementary baseball here. Yeah, you see, that's just something you see every day, right, folks? Yep. All right, so for the Admirals, one run on two hits. There were no errors. One runner left on pace. We're through one inning complete from Kinder Farm Park. Severn leading AECS, one nothing.
Welcome back as we enter the second inning. Um, AACS uh, looking to do some good work with the second half of their lineup. Uh, big difference uh, between the first half and the as Roman Cobb. This, yeah, this is Roman Cobb batting uh, 239. Pitch from Fisher here. Get too cute with him. You just got to, bottom five, you just got to throw strikes. Attack. Pitch from Fisher here. Strike. Count 2 1. 72 on that. You were talking a little bit about the bottom half of their lineup before. Yeah, so Roman Cobb with uh, 239. Pitch from Fisher here. Leads the bottom half of their lineup with a 238 average, and it is, it's downhill from there. So, um, yeah, uh, following that, we have a 192 average, then a 200 average, 219 average, and a 160 average. So it's essential that the Admirals can get through this part of the inning uh, unscathed. Swing and a miss. It's Strikeout. Cru it's crucial here to uh, for Fisher. He's just got to work through these batters, make sure no one gets on base who, who has no business being there. So... Walks and, and easy hits will be something Fisher will be looking to avoid. So that ball is high. Uh, I think that was 76. 76 on that fastball for ball one. So Stanley Matthews, another freshman, the second baseman in the batter's box as Fisher comes set the wine in the pitch. 75 on that one. That had a lot of movement there for strike one. Almost looked a little change up esque, but. That was not a, it was too firm for a changeup. Yeah. Looks like maybe Matthews may have gotten something in his eye there. Dirt, the umpire's trying to help him out. Yep. Yeah, it looks to be getting something out of that eye. The uh, infield here at Kinder looks uh, very dragged, um, dusty. Yeah, before the game started, you could see. A uh, little wind picked up and dust clouds roll into the outfield. Pitch from Fisher here. Hide away ball. 64 on that one. Curveball looked like it just slipped out of his hand there. Yeah. yeah. Pitch from Fisher here. Popped up. Popped up high. Is that gonna and that's going to be attempted by Caden Blank, and he catches it for the out. And that was an absolute, I don't even know what to call, but that was close to the fence. Yeah, he, he caught that right in front of the AACS dugout. Uh, could have been staring them down while he did it. Good old Magnus effect right there. The ball would spin, it's going to come back to the field of play. That's right. Always good heads up play there from him to, to get over to that. Strike. 75. Matt. And that brings up another freshman, Matthew Fleming. It's only a five at bats for the whole year. Yeah, he's batting 200, so one hit off his five attempts. Strike. Strike two is Fish is looking to make quick work of him. Three pitches. Doing what he needs to do to this bottom half of the lineup. That's right. This is this is the key for the Admirals, is just plowing through the second half of the lineup here. Yep. Well, in auspicious beginnings of the inning, but cruising out. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, Swung on a miss, 78 miles per hour on that fastball, strike three. Three up, three down for the Eagles. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We're through one and a half innings complete. Seven leading ace, yes, one to nothing.
we are back. Bottom half of the second inning. Yep, and we're going to lead off with uh, Caden Blank. Uh, he's batting 263 on the year, three singles. Uh, three doubles. Oh, sorry, three doubles. Right. 66 on that breaking ball. So Crisanto looks like he's throwing, you know, mid upper 60s curveball, upper 70s low 80s Here's fastball. Here's a pitch from Crisanto in the dirt and the way. That's a pitch he is not thrown yet today. Anyone know what that pitch was? Outside. There's a changeup. An absolute heater there. 80, 80 on the nose. So it looks like he's starting to mix in a third pitch now. So he's throwing fastball, curveball, now changeup. That's strike from there, 79. Full count. 2-2. Nope. Two, two. Swung on. Hard foul ball down the third base line by Blank. And Blank, uh, one of three pairs of brothers on the Admirals. You got the Blanks, the Shadlacks, and the Wards. Something unique to Severn School Baseball. Here comes a pitch from Crisanto. Low good, ball. Good, Dro good take. Yeah, that dropped out there at the very last second. It's a good eye from, from Blank there. Here's the pitch of Crisanto swing, and uh, you, got a, you got a piece of it there. Yeah, that's good. 80 on that pitch. Um, Crisanto's sitting a little higher now. Yeah. wonder if we'll see that changeup mix back in with a couple fast pitches in a row. Yeah, but leadoff man on, going to the bottom half of the lineup, do you, do you think he's gonna go secondary? Or do you think he's just gonna go best pitch fastball and just be like, do something? Mr. Grisanto, another high and away, and that walks. Caden Blank. Yeah, Caden Blank, he's, he's been a good hitter and uh, pitcher for, for the Admirals this year. Um, Sean Ward, number six, coming up to bat. I think we see Jack Boyer on there. Yeah, he's, start, he's the starting doesn't need here. If you were here on time, you would have known that. <laughs> I was testing. <laughs> My test is until tomorrow. <laughs> Sean Ward hitting uh, 138 on the year, but that does not tell the full story. Um, a lot of walks, a lot of hard hit balls, just unfortunately to the defense. Foul tip by Sean Ward there. In on the hands. He has been so unlucky this year. He's been hit by a pitch five times. He's probably had more line outs at, directly at hitters than anybody else on this team. Yeah, uh, that's just... And a pickoff attempt by Crisanto there. crisanto has been giving a good look at all the runners. Yeah, Sean Ward, interesting. 138 average, but 419 on base percentage. So you can tell. A lot of walks and there. There. He's going to steal. And that Rounder gets through. Two. That gets through the outfield. Left field fumbling. Now we got. There it is. Runners on runners. second and first. As Jack Boyer will come and try and get the Admirals some more points in this game. He was due for that, that bad hop to the third baseman. He was so due for yeah, that. Yeah, he, he finally. Uh, Gets a break. Got a break there. <laughs> As Jack Boyer comes to the plate, batting 250 on the year. Great to see this guy mixed in the rotation as a designated hitter. Here's pitcher Crisanto here, a bunt. Good. And that's fielded by a pitcher thrown to first base. That was beautiful. And sacrificial out. Beautiful bunt. But yeah. Well executed. Great work there from Boyer, I'm sure. Sure, so his, to do sure, sure, the Admiral's dugout is going to be enthusiastic for him when he gets he, back he there. He returns to the dugout a hero. <laughs> that was a beautiful job. I mean, you deadened it. I mean, way to, way to get down, way to get to eye level with the bat, not lunge at it. Great, great mechanics to get that bunt down. Yeah, and with the one out, two runners in scoring position. Hope Here's the Admiral's going to make most of this. As um, Andy Blank takes ball one. And he blanked batting 194 on the year. Strike. I'm not sure he could have done much with that. That ball was yeah, right in on his hands. 
They're inside on that. Uh, hard pitch to hit for sure. Oh, in the dirt, good block by the catcher. It's going to be interesting to see the tactic here. Is he going to is he going to try to go cute and try to get him off speed, or is he going to go right at him? Because if he tries to get too cute, puts him on, brings the top of the lineup back around to Fletcher Warner. Yeah. Probably yeah. cute, but I don't know. Away. So that's on oh. 76. Good into, stop by Catch once again. Yeah. Catcher's been doing a great job today. Uh, Hammond, Andrew Hammond. Yeah, Andrew Hammond is all over the place. Doing a great job here stopping stopping these pitches that seem to sink out at the last second. Stop the stepping off. Andy, Bl Andy Blank, uh, the brother Caden Blank. Um, Pitcher Grisanto, strike. Brings us to a full count. I mean, he's got a base to work with, but does he want to go to it? I think he's going to try to go fastball in. Pitcher Grisanto, swing, ground one. ball to shortstop. Here's fielded, then there's the out at first. Scores one as um, Andy Blank knocks in his brother Caden for an RBI. Score your Admirals two, ACS zero. Let's go Fletcher. Some very productive outs by your Admirals this inning. So they get runners on first and second, nobody out, sacrifice them over, ground ball that forces the shortstop to go away from the play at home to bring home the run. And now the top of the lineup's back up. Admirals looking to do some more damage. Ball. Fletcher Warner again, one of the best hitters in the MIAA with a 426 average. And that's a pass ball. Nope. Ward looking home. Snuck just by the catcher there, but he only about a hook back. Good read by Ward not to get into no man's land there and get stuck. Yeah, especially with two outs. With two outs, yeah. Not, not, not how you want to end the inning there. And a dangerous hitter at the plate who's already one for one with a stolen base and a run scored today. Yeah. Very good hitter for the Admirals. This is the pitch. There's the pitch. 78 on that. Uh, up top of the zone. Does he get the green light 3 0? Doesn't need to. There it is. And that will bring Matthew Fisher back to the plate. Fish again batting 375. Dangerous top half of the lineup for the Admirals. Sacrifice fly RBI his first time up. Fisher reading the sign. Here's Fisher for Santo. Ball. That was, that was a little quick pitch there. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, the, the pitcher was ready to go. Fisher was in, and he, he kind of quick pitched him there. Fisher knows what he's doing, though. He's holding him off. In 79. Here's Fisher for Santo running there to second. There goes Fletch. And it's Ooh. cut by pitcher. Oh! Passable to third. Here goes Sean Ward for the home run. Oh, and there's going to score. And they're going to send. And they were looking to send Fletcher yeah, as well, but yeah. I think that was the right call to hold the ball. Yeah, uh, definitely would have been close there, uh, but not necessarily a reason to risk it uh, when you got Matthew Fisher at the plate. So a stolen base E1 because they were holding the runner. Three nothing Admirals. mile an hour strike down the middle. Good 2-0 take. Hammond telling his pit, his pitcher to breathe there. And it's, he gets just under it, scooping it up to the first baseman there. It's a field pitcher with the out. No. Wrap it up for the Admirals. Great inning there to score two runs. Uh, Got through the bottom half of the lineup, brought back up the top half. Um, some great plays all around. Yep. So to, to end the inning, two runs on just the one hit from Sean Ward. Uh, there was the one error on the failed pickoff play at third base, and there was one runner left on base. So through th uh, through two innings complete here from Kinder Farm Park, 7-3, AACS 0.
right. Uh, leading off for a CS to start the third, we have Noah Beal batting 219 and uh, Griffin Smith batting 160 takes us to the bottom of the lineup. Um, here's Noah. That's Hunter's cousin. Is it really? Pretty sure. Is that first pitch fastball is fouled away from possibly Hunter's relative? <laughs> Jury's still out on that one. Ball away. And the, the dream team stepping out of the dugout. Yeah, we got, we got the whole dugout. We got to get that foul ball. I think I... Perfect. Is you know getting those foul balls is a team effort. Folks. The entire Admirals dugout is empty to get this foul ball. I just saw Trevor yeah. McNamara, guys. Ground ball into the hole. Oh, nice oh, backhand. Play. Oh, that was a great stop there. Uh, make a make a sliding sliding catch there and fire. That's a first. Yeah, wonderful play by Aiden Chad, like the shortstop there. He went multiple st steps to his right, ranging backhand, makes a throw over, but Beal hustling it down the line, able to beat it out for an infield single to lead off the top half of the third inning. Yep. And here is... Uh, and Matt Fisher steps off looking for first. In the dirt, but good pick by mine. Probably looking to see whether or not Griffin Smith is going to show bunt here. Yeah, you know, 160 batting average. Um, wouldn't be surprising if we saw that. Here comes the pitch from Fisher way outside, and they're looking for that back pick there, 100%. Shadlack in full standing position as the pitch came through. Yeah, Fisher, this game is definitely uh, throwing a lot of checks, looking at second and first. Not sure about this, though. Like, ninth hitter, you just go right after him. You know, if he's willing to give himself up, there's a foul tip. If he's willing to give himself up, let him give himself up. I mean, you got the bottom of the lineup right now before it swings back on over. Just focus on the hitter here. Take care of business. Yeah. Although AACS is known to bend, to bunt with one strike here. So they will show and then put a bunt down sometimes. And that's why you see the throw over there because they want to see whether that 1-1 one, one bunt play with strike was on. What do you mean? So oftentimes what they'll do is they'll not they'll swing away or not show bunt first strike, but when they got a strike on them, then they'll put a bunt down and catch them off guard. There's, there's, the, there's the bunt, and there and Mr. Maggard, the the ever knowing baseball <laughs> sage that he is, has exactly predicted it. This is like a Tony Romo announcer call where he just knew the play. He writes that down, adding it to his ever growing baseball database, which he will. I've got some good intel, folks. He will enjoy with a robe and a cappuccino later this <laughs> afternoon. Now, unless he's Rod Crew, I don't see him bunting with two strikes. By reaching yeah. fire. Oh, he's, he's got him. There it is. Got the there it is. Down. So. And another pickle here. Let's see if they can execute as always. And there is the out. Tag. So I here, that was by. You're one six. I'm sorry, you're one baseman. three. Anderson Blank. Six, three, four. Caught stealing. See, that's just some mental math. Of that. Yeah, I can't count that well, but I'm glad we have someone over here who can. As I'm uh, glad that guy's greeting my AP stats. So <laughs> as Griffin with two strikes here. And there, Matt oh, throws hit inside. by pitch by Fisher. Yeah. To Smith, as he, not just as he said. Yeah, and that'll bring the top of the lineup back up. Uh, Admirals here with one out, hoping that they can uh, get out of this. You know, you usually with the bottom half of that lineup, you you hope to see, you know, just a clean sweep there. But Admirals did a pretty good job of cleaning up. Hopefully, and get through the top half of this lineup too. He's looking for the bunt there, didn't go as planned. Here's the pitch from Fisher, outside and away. Hammond hit a long double, one hop defense, and almost straight away center field his first time up. Yeah, glad that fence wasn't a few feet closer. I had run potential. Fisher, I mean, think about how far over that is if that's hit to left field. 
325 versus oh, 365. one hop. Yeah, I mean, one. It was about probably about 350, 355 on yeah. the fly. Very hard That's hit ball. Sailing over that thing. Yeah. Here comes Fisher with the pitch. Swung and on. contact. That ball falls down into left field. Ben Campion coming around the bend. Oh, Ben fumbles Campion the ball, fumbles though. the ball. Good throw there. Oh, that's over the cutoff. Never mind. Yeah. Some damage uh, done there, but nothing the Admirals can't take care of. Yeah, now your mindset changes. You're just trying to get out of this inning. Um, you got a red line it right now. You're facing the best hitter on, on AACS's team in Ryan Jones. Yeah, you got two runners in scoring position. This is a, a dangerous spot for the Admirals. So... Coach started reminding catcher there's the base open here so he doesn't have to throw something over the middle. He can still work corners and nibble here. Yep. What is that? He doesn't have to throw a get me over. He can work corners, and if he misses, it's okay. Yeah, he has a walk to give, essentially. Yeah, yeah and it also would set up a double play that uh, okay. could get out of the inning. This is the one guy in their lineup you just can't let beat you. That's right, yeah. Uh, you can't let him bang him in, but it's fine if he walks. Right, yeah. Ryan Jones here batting 429. Um, another probably one of the strongest averages in the MIAA. There's a the pitch from Fisher now. Low. Stop by Shadlack, and I believe that Smith was looking at the home plate there. Yeah, Shadlack's been good behind the plate for the Admirals, stopping uh, balls from becoming anything dangerous. We've seen some top-tier catching this game. Yeah, this has been, this has been great catching on both sides. Absolute hype walkout. So they intentionally walked him there, which makes sense. So that loads the bases and brings up Sawyer Shepard. Shot, that? No, it's a fastball at 77. 77. That's what I said. So, <laughs> fastball. <laughs> Ground ball gets you out of the inning here, perhaps. Yeah, base is, base is loaded. That's inside. Some, so some, some bit of a scuttle over here. Shepard trying to claim that he got hit by that pitch. It was definitely inside, but... Umpire ruled that it did not hit him, and head coach, the third base coach, coming down to ask umpire for clarification on what he saw. Yep. Um, you know, obviously, I'm talking hit. to Fisher right now. Uh, no, 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 he's no, no, he's no, gonna no. he's gonna confer with the second base umpire, the person who's about a hundred feet away from where it actually happened. The two men. <laughs> Instead of trusting the the discretion and view of the person who's two feet away from where it occurred, we're gonna ask the person a hundred feet away. Yeah, obviously for. Um, AACS, this would be a, a huge hit by pitch as this would bring in a run. Bases loaded, too. It's an interesting mindset. Sh Shepard, I mean, he's 314 with a double and a home run on the year. Like, if I were him right now, I I'd want to be hit. There's ducks on the pond. If I get hit by a pitch, I mean, yeah, it scores a run, but I'm looking to maybe do more here. Yeah. I, know. I couldn't really tell. He didn't look like hurt. Swinging, uh, and it's a low ground ball, and that's straight home for the out. And that was some fancy footwork there. Yeah, heads Matthew up, Fisher. Heads up play there from Fish and Shadlack there to get that out. Uh, keeps it scoreless for AACS with two outs now. Base is still loaded. That was weird. The runner on third did not break on that. That's a ground ball with bases loaded. Runner on third, you gotta go. Yeah, I mean, like. You don't you have an option there. He almost retreated and then went. It was weird. So let's see if he can do if Fisher can do a little Houdini act here. It's Chris Santos batting. Yeah, Chris Santos, uh, 256 average. Um, be great for the Admirals to get out of this inning with no runs allowed. Comes a pitch from Fisher. Low inside, good blocking him from Shadlack. Yeah, Shadlack's been on that. He's been blocking just about everything that comes his way. I don't think we've seen a 
wild pitch yeah, make its way past. I don't think it has. Yeah, he's he's great at using See his body. Set it right. The wild pitch pass. Yeah, ball. but we don't we don't come want on. that right now. Don't 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 premonition that. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be an unfortunate way for some more runs to get in. Or for, okay, for why do we keep bringing in. it up then? Okay, pass ball. See, that's, that's your no way. way. That is your fault. That is as, unreal. As that is spoken unreal. into existence from the commentators here, the announcer jinx is real. I, I should have listened to the baseball sage, Mr. Jonathan Nagler. As, as AACS scores a run on a wild pitch. And if you heard me banging the, the, count, the, the top this here, wood, though. it's yeah, not we, wood, but I was coming as we, close as I we could. We needed something yeah. on that because the, the, the announcers here have just jinxed in a run. You cannot make that stuff up. I take full responsibility. Yeah, I, I expect yeah, a full. Forward. I expect a, a full crazy. apology. That's actually crazy. Yeah. yeah. Are you a man of superstition, Mr. Maggie? I'm not sure you if I was before, teacher. but I am now. As that swung on. Swing miss. 75 there from Matthew Fisher. So, I mean, with all things considered, if he gets out of this inning with giving up only one run, that's not that's not bad. Obviously, the goal would have been no runs, but he's one strike away from from getting out of this relatively undamaged. Yeah. Ooh. Way outside. He does have a base to work with, and the five hitter who's hitting 238 on the year is on deck. But you know, do you? He might try to nibble here, hit a corner here. If you miss, so be it. Yeah. Swung and that's on. a oh, oh, oh. hard grounder to center that's field. Gonna bring in two. Fielded cleanly by Fletcher Warner with a nice toss in. They're going to look home, but it's too late. Three-all ball game for ACS. They've already scored more runs in this game than they have in their last three. Or I guess I guess equaled the amounts. I think that was a little bit of a location miss there from Fisher. He, the Shadlick Sh set set up inside there. That ball drifted over the middle of the plate. He's gonna want that one back. Yeah, as, as we said before, you know the top four in this lineup. You really gotta watch out for. Uh, all very strong before we get to the, the three consecutive freshmen. Another clean block by Shen. Jason Martino getting loud in the dugout right now. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Swing and a miss. miss. That was way late on that. Yeah, that cut uh, really hard the last second there. I noticed he's taking a little bit off. That was 74 on that pitch, but it has a lot of yeah, that was I was right over the right over the place at the last second. Kind of dove out there. Got him. There. One, the, three, another pickle. Another six. Pickle. How many pickles are we going to see in this game? And then they as the Admirals finally the tag. Admirals finally get out of that inning. ACS manages to score three runs. Scores three three as we as the Admirals are up.
All right, welcome back as we enter the bottom of the third. Um, Admiral's up to bat. Uh, we are leading off with Ben Campion, great hitter on the year, 409 average. Um, hope, hoping to get some runs back after ACS scored three in the last inning. With two outs. With two outs. So that swung on, fouled off. Spoken into existence by John Esposito. You can direct all your hate mail to him. Yeah, you know, if the if the Admirals do <laughs> fall in this game, uh, we have one man and one man only to blame. It's John Esposito. I blame it too, man. <laughs> Here's the pitch from Crisanto. 69 there. Change up. Yep. Dropping down low. Campion had seen two pitches and swung at both of them. Campion way outside. Outside there, that was 63. Cement mixer that didn't bend. Bean. Swung on, that pops up. That might off. be trouble. That is... Hard read. It couldn't have been any closer. They almost had that one shot. Almost a Texas leaguer double yeah. in Maryland. Just, just barely falls foul there. A little unfortunate for Ben Campion as he gets back to the plate. Although at Indian Creek, that might have been a home run. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 short down left, it, it's, short, it's short to left field at Indian Creek, folks. If you have never been there, Google map it sometime, you'll laugh. It is a rectangular baseball field. Two, two. How does that work? Swung on. Oh. Popped up to center field. I pop up there, and that's called. Plays made. Good contact. Yeah, Ben Campion making good contact there around. Just unfortunate with the, with the foul ball placement there. No, sir, off-field team's a little unsure of themselves out there. They, they, the routes that they've taken to their balls, they, they just seem a little tentative. They don't... Yeah, didn't really hear any call-offs uh, for that either. There's a pitch. To the butt with hey, hey, hey. hey, come on. This is an exciting game. sneaks in. He can miss... <laughs> As, this is the world's most exciting sport. As Aiden Shadlack up to bat. Let's see what he can do for the Admirals. Swung on. Good contact Good there. Catch there by the Absolute line stop. drive to short. Just yeah. right to the glove. Yeah, and that's unfortunate for the Admirals. Um, that was a little higher. Uh, you'd see a base hit there. Almost the exact same spot he hit it to last time. Last one had just a little bit more air underneath and was able to get over the shortstop's head. That one, unfortunately... Just a smidge lower within the reach. Yeah, and this will bring up uh, the second brother. High, high pop up there, sneaking its way into the outfield, and oh. then that's bobbled by the right fielder. So he reaches on the air. You can, uh, you can investing the first days. You can thank me for that one too. Yeah, outfield just did not does not seem very comfortable out there. Yep, this every, everything's yeah. predicted back here. Whether it helps us or hurts us, we know what's going on. Yeah, you know, we, we call everything, we speak things into existence. No, we're, the the ever-knowing baseball scene. We're all yeah, powerful yeah. back here. So Max Barney is going to courtesy run for the catcher, Shadlick. So Barney at first. They better get maxed out. And, yeah, Barney uh, throughout the season has been uh, pinch running. Uh, goes by many names on the baseball team. Uh, he's only referred to as Barnes & Noble and the Purple Dinosaur. So... Hopefully, we can Love see. Max. Max is actually, oh, strike. Max is actually my, I was his senior ambassador. You know that? Like oh, yeah, yeah, in. the ambassador program. Yeah. So, uh, Max has kind of been a protege. Man. So, anything Max does here is he takes there off for a second. Oh, there's a steal attempt, and that's through. That's through. That is through. Max fails to capitalize. Well, that, he doesn't, that's, that's that's doesn't want to run there. That was backed up, and you, you know the adage: you don't want to make the first or the third out of the inning at third base. Yep, I'll accept that from Max. So, so that was all John Esposito my from, mentee, from his I his him. mentorship. Yeah. You can only imagine the uh, volumes of advice that I've missed. Here's the pitch from Chris Santo, way inside. And this is Caden Blank, uh, 263 hitter. <laughs> Big spot for him. See if base knock can give the Admirals a lead here. What's that push? Fastball. Got Beneath up. the knees. That's some runs. That was, that was a good attempt at the at framing there by the, maybe by the a little, catcher. Maybe a little two-seam action. Yeah. 
I, I would surmise that. John Esposito, folks, needs a sponsor by Five Hour Energy. <laughs> yeah, he is. You know, we might be down to two commentators again. There we go. Hey, with the grounder to first, hand it off to pitcher for the out. A little underhand action there. Ending the inning. So the Admirals can't All capitalize on the, on the top of the lineup there. All tied up, 3-3. Three, three. Two or three innings. Jason Martino retrieving the bat. All right, and we're back up here uh, as we start the top of the fourth. Uh, leading off for AACS is um, uh, Roman Cobb, Roman Cobb uh, batting 238. Just a bit from Fisher now. Fish, Whoa. 75. Cobb was up previously when Chris Hanto got caught stealing, picked off to end the inning. Pitch from Fisher there is a hard hit foul ball down the third baseline. Yep. It's actually the second time today that uh, Cobb was up when an inning ended on the base pass. As Hammond got thrown out of home to end the first inning. Just misses. Two and one the count. There's the pitch. Low inside. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, inside balls from Matthew Fisher. He seems to like the, like the bottom left corner. Um, see a lot of strikes there as well. into the second half of AACS's lineup. So it's crucial that the Admirals can get through here with no issues, uh, bringing up um, a two, or sorry, a 192 hitter followed by 200, 219. So as Coach Starr will visit the mound. Oh, so we are gonna have a pitching change. So we're gonna have a pitching change. We're gonna come right back in just a moment here. Um, so. Lead off man, Roman Cobb on first base, 3-3 game, top of the fourth. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back. On the mound for your Admirals in relief, Ben Campion, number five. John McCone, what do we know about him? Well, ben Campion's been good on the mound for the Admirals this year. Uh, has a 2.4 ERA. Um, GPA? GPA. 2.4 ERA. I think his, his GPA might be nearing five at this point. Yeah, if you're going to Dartmouth, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, so, but yeah, he's been, he's been good for the Admirals. Um, I think he might lead the Admirals in an ERA. Uh, so it'll be good to see him on the mound. Nice, nice change of pace. Hopefully, get the Admirals out of this inning um, because we need, we can't let them run up the score anymore. Campion there, 72. And Campion, there's one thing that he does. He pounds the strike zone. He does not issue many free passes on the air. Here's the pitch from Campion, and that is a hard hit fly ball. And Fletcher Warner comes way back. Great play there by Fletcher it. Warner. Pulls that's the runner a tough read. first, too. Yeah, not just a tough read, that's just a tough catch. I mean, he was in a full sprint. He had full to go extension. full extension left center. Fantastic play by Warner. Heck of a swing by Matthews there, but it does not get rewarded. So some changes defensively for the Admirals with the pitching change. Swing and a miss. 73 on that pitch. Uh, ben, uh, ben Campion bringing up back-to-back left-handed pitchers for the Admirals. So Fisher, who was pitching, goes to first base, and Keaton Blank, who was at first, moves out to left field. So there's a bunt, bunt there. which is caught and by Ben caught Campion. in the air with the throw for the tag back with the double play wow, the double by Ben play Campion, the solo bunts. double play. That... That's some is a special play there by Ben Campion. You don't see, how often do you see a caught bunt thrown to first for the out? And you already know the Eagles are punching the air after that one. Yeah, the Eagles hate to see Ben Campion do that. You know, double play on a bunt is not the usual. That's cruised. So, great job of getting out of that by Campion. You get out of that with four pitches. So, no runs, no Chip hits, Brown, no errors, nobody Thank left you. on. Great school. Yeah. Great yeah. school. It's awesome. Are you psyched? Tied to yeah. three, going in the Pretty middle good. of the fourth inning. All right, we got Sean Ward leading off the Admirals. Uh, speech. Speech guy in the bottom of the fourth. I don't know. He might be the second best singer at Severn. He is. You know who the first is? It's got to be Ben Campion. No. Definitely not. No. Mr. Hughes. It's got to be Mr. Hughes. Were you at school today? Were you at school today, Sean? Because that was the greatest thing. Sorry we missed that third, first, but. Third, yeah. third best An singer. absolute phenomenal performance. If you missed it. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I would have paid. I'm to sure see it's that. making the rounds on socials. Mr. Hughes bust out in the song. 
Oh, they, you, can't, one, you cannot forget the slide in the middle of the performance. No that one was expecting that. That actually ripped part of the front of his pants. I believe it. Was I mean, that they should be teaching that out here, sliding into bases, because that slide was... Actually, was like, it was crazy because of Mr. Hughes, but it was actually good. Yeah, as Sean Ward here, 1-1 one, one count. What's the... 65 on that. High ball. Sean Ward, one hit, uh, snuck past the shortstop there. Third baseman. Third baseman there. Um, so that's swung on. Little check swing there. He's got to commit to it. They're running hard, crashing hard. What's the reasoning for that? Because it, it hit off the knob, ball's in play. If the ball had kicked back into fair territory, he would have been out. So they could just kick it? No, no, no. So, like, there's the lip of the grass. So if the ball like hit the it, grass it, uh, and it rolled back into fair, or whenever it hits off the end of the bat, you never know what type of English it has on the ball. It could spin back into the field to play. It seemed pretty far off, but I guess that makes sense. And there's the pitch. 70 on that. Is it Cristiano? What is it? What's his pitcher's name? Crisanto. Jacob Crisanto. He's a junior right-hander. He transferred to AECS from Indian Creek. Oh, oh. hard hit foul ball. Almost just absolutely punished. Boyer froze there. Yeah, Jack Boyer almost <laughs> got caught in the crossfire there. As we got a full count here. He sacrificed himself the first time to move the runners. He didn't need to be <laughs> sacrificed in foul territory by Sean Ward foul ball. I got to say, I'm excited to see Boyer get up to the plate again. It would be great. Here's a pitch from Crisanto. Swung on. It's a high hit fly oh. ball, but right field's camped under it. Left field. I'll tell you what. At Indian Creek, at McDonough, or I'm sorry, at Boys Latin, that, those would be home runs. Yeah. That'd be a home run. Long, long field here at the at the farm park. As Jack Boyer comes to the plate, we're looking for some Boyer magic today. If there is anything that could get this team going, it would be it would be a hit here from Jack Boyer. Down in Florida, he had a smoked RBI single to center. Here we go, Boyer. Swung on. He is swinging a mess. Coming from uh coming for the fences today. Here's the pitch from Crisanto, swing and a miss by Boyer. First two pitches, fastball up the belt, up the letters. Let's see if they climb the ladder here, maybe go a little high or see if he's willing to chase. Here's the pitch from Crisanto, Told you. fastball out and away. Sage. I'm just going to call him that, Sage. Wonder who we'll see the Admiral sent to get this one. So we'll see if he if goes fastball even higher here or if maybe he throws a breaking ball in the dirt. Yeah, you know. Something to kind of a waste. See if he's willing to chase. Yeah, Boyer, Boyer has been swinging. Here's the pitch from Grisanto. Good and take a, there. A good take by Boyer. That ball had some movement on it. Yep. There's the breaking ball in the dirt. I think he's just setting it up to go right back to the fastball belt letter high here. See if he's willing to chase. Yep. Here's the swing. Oh, no. Low ball into the dirt. Folks. Spiked it. As you've gone from a... Uh, 0-2 oh, to 2-2. Two, two. Oh, two. Yep, that's that's what I was looking for. I helped you out there. It's all good. Little, threw up the assist there. A little alley -oop. Yep. Down the middle, looking strike at. Yeah. yeah. Two outs for the Admirals. Um, did make the swing good. Just made him work, though. Yeah. Made him work. He made him throw six pitches there. If, if nothing else, if you can make it and rise the pitch count, it's going to help you out. Get into the bullpen. It's Andy Blank up to bat. Now, both of these teams have good pitchers that they could go to, but both teams have three games in four days. They have a game tomorrow and a game Thursday, so you don't want to waste too many bullets today if necessary. Yeah, load management is definitely going to be important uh, with that many games in that short of a span. Yeah, but first things first, you got to win the game at hand. But at what at what cost are you willing to accept that at? Yeah, I'm sure ACS in a in a close game like this one will definitely be trying to hang on with good pitching. Here's pitcher for Santo, swing, ground ball to third base. Finley Field is taking his time here with the pump. Mercy out. So, go ahead. Three up, three down. Four innings complete from Kinder Farm Park. Severn and AECS tied three to three.
we're back. Because <laughs> our, <laughs> our, play, our play by play is struggling here a little bit as we enter the, the top of the start. fifth. It's all good. We're, we're doing things for the first time, folks. It is, if it, it sounds anything close to a well oiled machine, that's because we're, we're trying the best we can. If it doesn't, well, it's because it's Admiral TV. <laughs> He's a petrol champion. Down low, that was 68. Down low ball. 891, so you really want to get through these bottom two hitters first. Here's Petrum Campion outside. Foul to. And this is um, Noah Beal back up, the supposed cousin to Hunter. Let's see if he can do anything here. 61 curveball just fails to make it back over the plate. Two on the count. Swing and a foul tip there. Makes the count two two. Ben Campion opening a strike out here. If 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 Ben can get eight nine and then can work efficiently through that top half of the order, they might not have to face the top half of the order for a fourth time. And that would be huge. Is outside. Uh, the top half of the AACS's lineup is uh, considerably more loaded than the bottom half. So uh, it'd be big for the Admirals to only have to go through that one more time. Wet. That's, a, that's a tough walk to a leadoff man, guy hitting 219 on the year. Yeah, you know, the bottom half of the lineup, that's, that's where you just need to get him up and, and put him down. Can't waste your time getting right. people and on base. Now that allows the nine hitter to try to sacrifice him over and then bring up the top half of the lineup. So not the ideal start for Campion and the Admirals. Yeah, we've already seen uh, many bunt attempts as uh, Griffin What's Smith the call there. He offered it the pitch, so it's a strike one. Yeah, Griffin Smith there. Going for the bunt, trying to advance that runner on first with no outs. Zachary Starr with the 25. Some type of side effort, you know, Oh. What a job yeah, there for Brendan Shadler. Uh, Brendan Shadler is, is a brick wall behind the plate right now, not letting anything get past. I think right, right when you need it to, I mean. I don't know if Shaq first. could do any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just made his wingspan Rackers. about 10 feet. Got like a, a Wembenyama wingspan with that jump. <laughs> Come for the baseball, get the NBA references. <laughs> Another nice. bunt attempt, pull back, and that's discovered. <laughs> and Beal and Beal couldn't recognize that the ball was behind the feet of Shadlack, so he did not advance to second base there, but the count is two and one. Campion, a little a little out of sorts right now. Usually he's pretty pretty good with his command. Walk the leadoff man, the eight hitter. He's missed the zone really on the first three pitches to a guy offer, you know, willing to sacrifice himself. Another bunt there down the line. Beautiful bunt, but it's outside. So a rolls right, right, foul. Right. Good read there on Ward. I mean, he touched that just as a one foul. Yeah. Brings us to a 2-2 count. Um, now bunting is not an option. Yeah. He's not, he's not Mr. Rod Carew. Mr. 24, 24 bunt singles with two strikes on him in his career. 24 bunt singles. Yep. yep. So he's just a bunting machine. Well, he, he was just an overall hitting machine. Spend Campion checks first. A little snap throw there. Beal yeah, gets dirty. Yes. Matt Fisher just throwing down the tags. Definitely doing laundry when he gets home tonight. Yeah, as a left-handed pitcher, Ben Campion obviously looking right out first there. Jason okay. Martino offers words of encouragement from Zaga. Big pitch here. He's got to throw a strike. Yeah. Here's a pitch from Campion outside. Back-to-back outside. -back walks to lead off the inning. Yeah, now that brings up the top of the lineup with no outs. Could be trouble for the Admirals. Got to start getting some outs soon. The ads need to go. 
substitution. So we're going to have a defensive substitution. So Caden Schnabel is going to go into left field as a defensive replacement only for Caden Blank. So that's going to allow Caden Blank to start warming up in the bullpen for the Admirals. Yep. Uh, Caden Blank also been good coming out of the bullpen for the Admirals. In terms of stuff, he's got the most electric stuff on the team. I think there's no argument Caden. with regards to that. Caden, yeah. Here's a pitch from Campion. Oh, hit by pitch. Gonna load the bases with no outs. For their most hit? dangerous hitter on the team, Ryan Jones. 429 hitter with six doubles, a triple, three homers, and nine RBIs on the air. This this could get this could get ugly here for the Admirals real quick. You know what? Come on, man. It's the importance of getting through the the second half of the lineup. It's interesting to see that there's no mound visit here, no talk, but uh, he knows Ryan Jones. We talked about him. Yeah, I, I would expect. Yeah, I, so head coach Zach Starr is going to go out to the mound. Okay. He's got to slow this thing down for him a little bit. Sage is four for four right now, Jack. And they're going to they're going to go to the pen. They're going to bring in the lefty blank, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Three three, top of the fifth, bases loaded, nobody out. It's pitching change for your Admirals. It's a smart, smart play. All right, in the game to pitch for your Admirals, number eight, Caden Blank, lefty junior, comes into a very difficult spot here. Bases loaded, nobody out after two walks and a hit by pitch by Campion load the bases for AECS's most dangerous hitter, Ryan Jones. So what do we know on Blank so far this year stats-wise? Yeah, so this is going to be a really interesting matchup here as uh, Severn's, uh, I'd say, most electric pick most electric pitcher has a lot of different uh, clubs in his back here. He has a 5.25 uh, ERA, uh, which is, you know, a little misleading. Here comes a pitch from Blank, outside ball. Yeah, and that's 84 on the first pitch, so Kane Blank definitely... Not definitely, fully loose yet either. Yeah, definitely turn the speed up here. Is, I think the fastest pitch we saw before this might have been 81. He's quick. And he's coming into a red line spot here. We need him now. Here comes a pitch from Blank. Curveball, I think. Yeah. Gets under it, out the center, camped. There's the catch. Up. And here comes a throw for home. And not quite in time, but. Yeah, so that'll, that'll give AACS the lead here. Um, the tag there, how much you can do. Seven finally gets their first out of the inning. Jones with the single. Or no. No sack fly. My, my. Yeah, sack fly. Um, which, you know, not the end of the world when you're facing a 429 battery like Jones. When did a sack fly? Sack fly is when, when you score, the runner scores on a fly out to the outfield. So, is they're trying to or just all at bat? No, so, so it doesn't get counted as an at bat, but it does count against their own base percentage. So. So it counts as a plate appearance, but does not count as an at-bat for stack-keeping purposes. Why is that not just an RBI? It is an RBI. Uh, it's just a fly ball. And there is a pop-up. It's 
sneaking his way out to the outfield. Fletcher Warner camped under that. He's going to make quick work with home. the throw to home. Woo! Wow. <laughs> Threw that on a rope from center field right to home plate. I think you just put the AACS runners on notice. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they, will, they will not be running if it goes to center field after that one. So three pitches, two quick outs with only one run given up against their two and three hitters. And now the four hitter, Jacob Crisanto, coming in. So one more out Blaine can get to get out of a very difficult situation he inherited. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Fletcher will be on all conference. Maybe. Potential all conference prospect. There's the block. But first things We've been first. talking about that all year. Yeah. Crucial. So first things first here. We got to get out of this inning before we worry about all conference stuff. Yeah. We'll My worry mistake. about the accolades Seems. after the season. <laughs> Admirals do not want to give up any more runs here. They got ACS with a runner on third. That's and a hard hit foul ball down the first baseline. 80 there from Caden Blank. It's been throwing hard all season. If you follow him on social media, you know he's topped 88 in the bullpen sessions. Yep, yeah, this, this is a guy who puts some heat in the ball. Yeah. Missed that reading there. Maybe that was too fast for the radar gun. Yeah, More importantly, it was strike two. I think it only reads up to 100, so it could have been upwards of 110 there. Technically, yeah, it's 130, so maybe over 130. Okay, good Maybe day. Sid Finch. <laughs> There's the uh, grounder bobbled by oh, Aiden Shadlack no. for the run. And that is absolutely crushing. Yeah, an error there from Aiden Shadlack turns the third out into a uh, two-run sure what lead happened there. He looked like he had a hold of it and just got away from him and just throwing. He's usually very sure-handed, so that's just very unexpected there from the Admirals. Let's see if they run themselves out of an inning for a third time with Cobb up to the plate. And there is an absolute heater by Keaton Mudd. Looked yeah. like maybe a slider there. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a fastball. That's a that, that, that looked like a slider there, 76. Yeah, it's right there inside, hard pitch to hit. Outside, oh, ball. Two on the count. There's the ball outside. Maybe a March strike, but not an April one. Not getting the outside corner here. It's right down the middle. That's a May strike. Full count. Okay, the zone getting more. You would say when it gets warmer, it gets a little. You can get a little tighter. When it's cold, you, you open it up a little bit. And foul to my line. And Admiral stay in this tough inning a little bit longer. Kane Blank trying to doing his best to take us out of it. The strike here will do it. Full count, two outs. The runners will get move on. So. Cobb does get a ball into the outfield for a base hit. It's surely going to score a run. Unless he goes to Fletcher Warner. Ooh, a little, a little shifty back pick there. Yeah, this is now the third left-handed pitcher from the from the Admirals. So that swung on. Shot like bobble again. there, but he gets it in time. And and thank God. Yeah, Admirals could not go on sustaining that inning any longer. That'd be crazy. So for the for the Eagles, they scored two runs on no hits. No hits. There were two walks. There was a hit by pitch. There was an error. There was a sack fly, and there were two runners left on base. Four and a half innings complete. The visiting Eagles are up on your Admirals, five to three.
All right, Admirals starting the uh, bottom of the fifth, leading off for the top of the lineup, Fletcher, or yeah, Fletcher Warner, best uh, best hitter by average on the Admirals. Desperately needs to get something going here with the ACS up by two. Got to respond here. Big inning, top of the order, up for the Admirals. Third time through against Crisanto. That's popped up. And Warner is not happy with that. Catch made. One out for the Admirals. Or one out against the Admirals. I'll bring up Matt Fisher. 375. Desperately needs to get something going here. Need runners here. First pitch fastball up and he gets underneath it there. Not sure if that's the game plan. Starwood didn't look too happy as he came back. Grabbed by the shortstop. Good pick by Matt Fisher is out at first. That's two outs on two pitches. Two pitches. Ben Campion. Not sure about the game plan here. You got a pitcher you're seeing for the third time through? Yeah, I just... That was her <laughs> Mr. Damian Baird, he's in the stands. Hold on, we got head coach Zach Starr is asking for the base umpire to come over. Hold on, so we got we got a discussion here going on as John Esposito is looking at the crowd. <laughs> so, well, the umps are discussing. Do we want to get an out of town scoreboard update? Sure, we can give an out of town score update. So we do have one uh, one game final here. Um, Mount Carmel went and played Indian Creek this afternoon and mercyed Indian Creek by a score of ten to nothing. Here's the pitch here. Strike. I'm sure. Brian Campion didn't want to swing, get the third out in three pitches. It's a pitch from Crisanto. Low ball. Good take. 68 on that curveball. Yeah, very good take there. A lot of movement on that pitch. Lays off the fastball upstairs. Counts two and one. As my commentators are starting to figure out how hard it is to do a full seven innings. Throw this pitcher off his game. But count full 3-2 on that 78 mile an hour fastball on the inside corner. Takes it down low, Good take 80 miles as per hour. five advances to first. Good job by Campion there to be a patient hitter after the first two batters of the inning got out on two pitches. Yeah, and that'll bring up the Shadlack brothers here, trying to bring some scoring back to this game for the Seven Admirals. And you know, Aiden, you know, he's probably looking to atone here a little bit for that bobble of miscue at shortstop here. That's that a hard grounder, and that's almost through, but that's stopped by short with the but oh, and it's fumbled there. Attempt at the play at second. Yeah, so second that's base a, fumbles it. That was a that was a heck of a play by the shortstop there for ACS. Um, Ryan Jones, and he tried to kind of glove scoop it to the second baseman there covering, but it's just a little too hard to handle there. It's going to be an infield single for Aiden Chadlick. And so back-to-back -back runners get on here with two outs for Brendan Chadlick, the catcher. And that brings Ben Campion to second. Um, as there's the pitch. 67. Called strike one. Yeah. As I'm most definitely desperately got a runner on second, which they had not had in, I think, the last two innings. Fastball out. Ooh, I'm not sure about that one. If, he, if he's... I was just about to call that a ball outside. Yeah, he, he was calling that a ball on on, on uh, blank last inning. Okay, so he's got to take a two-strike approach here, Shadlick. Good job there to spoil Top a good curveball at 66. Yeah, just keeps this ad, just keeps this inning alive for the Admirals here. Yep. Right now, he's just got to find a way to keep the line moving, get it to Blank, get it to Caden Blank, keep the inning alive here for the Admirals. Oh, and a close pickoff attempt with the out. And Aiden Shadlack is just for pickoff. Shadlack there, caught away from the base. Heads up. 
step off from the pitcher. Mr. Starr is not happy with that call. Uh, I'd like to spend a bit off his game. No, that 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 wasn't his fault because the first baseman wasn't holding. It was a back pick play. The thing Coach Starr is most upset is the second base umpire wasn't watching the play when it happened. He just made an anticipated call. He did not see that third out at the base there. It was a close play regardless. Great job by ACS to catch Shadlick napping, but not sure if the umpire truly saw that. But we're through five innings. The score ACS 5-7-3. All right, we're back here. Top half of the six is about to begin. Six, seven, eight, do up for AECS, who holds a 5 3 lead over your Severn Admirals. Stanley Matthews, the second baseman, freshman leading off. Admirals definitely need to get three quick outs here, and they got the man on the mound to do it. Kane Blank, 84 on that pitch. Is that was called a strike? Last half inning is called the ball here. There's a strike. Uh, didn't see the reading on that. Here's a pitch from Blake. Low fastball. Ball. Blank did an excellent job coming into a very difficult situation last night. Swing yeah. and miss. He had bases loaded, nobody out. Best hitter for ACS got a sack fly, a fly out that didn't score a runner, and then a ground ball that should have ended the inning. That's strike three. Emphatic strikeout call by the one. Yeah, desperately needed first out on the leadoff batter there. Oh. And it looks like they're going to sub and have Robert Bala hit in place of Matthew Flaming, who went 0 for 2 with the pop out double play last time. Bala is a 114 hitter on the year as he looks at a first pitch fastball, 82 called strike one. Kane, Kane Blank is just doing wonders here on the, the bottom half of this lineup. 84, pound in the zone, going right after the bottom half, which you got to do. There's a pitch for Blank, That's swinging a miss once three. again. That's another strikeout. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Kane Blank, two runners up, two runners down. Looking to get the third here, get the Admirals a chance to score some more runs. Noah Beal's been kind of a pest, a thorn in the Admiral's side. Got a single his first time up and then drew a full count walk off Campion to lead off the last inning. Ball. Here's a pitch from Blank. Fastball. 82 Ball. on that one. Um calls a well needed timeout here to dust off the old play. <laughs> that somehow got dusted within the last two pitches where there was no activity. Maybe maybe <laughs> Caden's fastball is drawing up dust and it's getting the plate dirty. Could be. And there, they it. just cannot time it up with Caden Black today, folks. Yeah. He's just got to pound the zone against these bottom half hitters that are hitting under 250 for the year. There's, there's another swing and miss. miss. They can't hit it, so you just you keep throwing it until they can. Here's the pitch from Caden Blank. 
right Last down ball, the middle. No, for swing three and a miss. That's three consecutive strikeouts. Three swinging strikes there. Caden Blank putting the work in to get the Admirals three up, three down as we move into the bottom of the sixth. All right, welcome back here. Bottom of the sixth about to begin. AECS is going to the bullpen. Well, not really. They're, they're going to one of their infielders. But um, Sawyer Shepard is the uh, new pitcher for AECS. He, he comes in in relief of Jacob Cursanto. He went five innings, gave him five hits, three runs, two earned, three walks, two strikeouts. What do we know on Shepard uh, so far this year? Oh, this is full. I thought he had the numbers ready, so we'll, we'll wait for uh, that. Let me, let me get back to you on, on that. So uh, Brendan Shadlack is going to lead things off for the, the Admirals against the relief pitcher, Shepard. So it's just a straight change, it looks like. Uh, As I'm struggling to find the pitching stats here for AACS. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in just one second. Um, so Sawyer Shepard, this is his seventh appearance, his first relief appearance. He's thrown 27 and two-thirds innings, given up just 16 hits, walked 25, struck out 40. Is that first pitch is fouled straight back? Did I say 80? I can't tell. I didn't see on that one. Sorry, because I was reading the stats and I thought you had pulled up. Oops. <laughs> A lot of movement on that circle there. 73. Dude, Allie's at Kinder. Right now. There's a strike. Brandon Shadlack. 86 on that. Yeah, swinging strike three. That's some fast pitching here out of the ASCS bullpen. Well, as I was trying to say before, I mean, in 40 strikeouts in 27 and two-thirds innings, so he's averaging about 10 and a half strikeouts per game. Yeah. yeah and per this, seven innings. It's a bad time as the Admirals desperately need runs here for, for a good pitcher like this to come in. 72 on that curveball. Stays outside for ball one. The Admirals have faced velocity, though, this year. This isn't the first time they've seen it. You know, they faced Addison Lambert from McDonough. He brought heat. You know, they faced some velocity and Evil Eye Livingston and some of the arms from St. Paul's. That's three straight curveballs. Yeah, you can see the, the movement on these curveballs here. I'm just surprised. Three straight curveballs to start off against Blank. It's a lot of respect here. Yeah, especially when, you know, you're throwing 86. 89 on that fastball. Wow. You know, throwing Caden Blank numbers to Caden Blank. 89 again on that fastball, catches the inside corner, and the count runs full. And those need to get base runners here. Oh, this one on. Ground ball. Oh, what a oh, hop. Off the shortstop. You can't fault that on the shortstop at all. That's a kinder single right there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> As this will bring up Sean Ward to bat. Um, you know, you'd love to see him get a Get a good hit here. We know we know you can do it. Um, he, he's hit the ball really hard. He flew out deep to left his last time up. 
He's been stung by the unlucky bug at times this year. He needs to have that reverse jinx. Here's the pitch. Swing and miss. 85 on the fastball of his eyes there for strike one. Yeah. Jason Martinez offers words <laughs> Shaking off, here's the pitch, and there's the steal. And they're going to throw to second. That's and the, safe. The, the catch is missed. Blank is safe by a mile. Let's see if the Admirals can capitalize. They're running on second. Had some trouble in the last inning. In the same position. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. And that's an infield fly. No. Pop up. No. Nice, here comes Lawrence Jacobs to hit. So I think Ryan Jones and Keenan Blank might know each other a little bit there. It's a little, a little joyful banter. As he caught that ball, he, he was going to fake like he dropped it to see if uh, Keenan would stray too far. I think those two go back a little bit. Lawrence Jacobs. Takes ball one outside. So Lawrence Jacobs. Lawrence Jacobs batting uh, 077 ball low and left on the year. Um, you know, it'll be interesting. Hopefully, you can get a hit here. Three okay. Hey, Admirals need base runners right now by any way possible. Lean into one, it might not feel good. Draw a walk, just do find a way to get on. And he draws a four pitch walk. Respect for Jacobs. You know, Jason Martino getting out. With with Jacobs standing at 6'4. At 6'6. Six, six. Six, six, is he 6'6? Six, six? Yes. 6'6. Six, six. It's a. It's a big strike zone, but he might be all MIA baseball height team. <laughs> <laughs> no, he Lawrence could be in the NBA. There's the pitch. Good take there. <laughs> so the one bugaboo that has played Shepard at times throughout the year is command. His stuff is dynamic. Oh, oh where the hit by pitch and way to wear for the freshman. And he took yeah. that off the elbow. No, and he's gonna feel that in the morning. And that's gonna bring up the top of the lineup with the bases loaded. This is where this is where the Admirals need to capitalize. Yeah. So the Admirals. So as I was saying before, Shepard has been plagued by command. His stuff plays. His stuff plays at the top level of the MIAB conference. It might even play at the levels of the A conference. The problem is, is that the command. 25 walks, multiple hit by pitches in 27 and two thirds innings coming into this outing. So. That's really where, you know, it, it, as soon as he finds it, it can go away. And we've seen here, you know, four pitch walk and then a 1 0 hit by pitch. And now the Admirals have the bases loaded for their highest batting average on the team in the form of Fletcher Warner. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of runs scored this game already with two outs. And Admirals are hoping to add on to that total. And if there's one person on this team, I won't say just one, but if there's one person, at least one person I feel comfortable with handling velocity. It's Fletcher Warner, and we're and we're gonna have a pinch runner at second base here for Lawrence Jacobs, and that's gonna be Jameer Branch. Jameer Branch getting into the game, great, great presence on the, the football team. Um, Interesting choice to use for yourself, there, I think. but he's got a lot of speed, and so a ball hit into the outfield, two outs, you're going on anything. And with they bases loaded. two here, so that's actually a good point. Right, so the, you know he gives you a great chance to potentially score that giant run. Warner can do his job here and drive something in the outfield. Woo! He's got a healthy lead and then he's sending him. He's sending him. And there. Jameer almost had a look at it, and that's huge. There is a that's much huge, much needed run for the Admirals in the bottom just, of the just six. That's just we needed it. Yeah. So, so it's five to four. And that, Base hit puts, could put the Admirals in the lead. The go ahead run in the form of Andy Blank out there at second base. Here we go. Buckle up, folks. 86 on that one. Called called strike. Woo! Oh. Chin music. Head hunting out here. Yeah. As as stated before, you know, the control could be an issue here. 
Seeing Jameer Branch in scoring position is a great, great thing. Here's the pitch from Sawyer Falta. Heads up play if, by Bones. If there's one person you don't want to throw chin music to, it's Fletcher Warner because he can actually sing. That's true. Yeah, he's great, great presence on Breakwater. Here's the pitch from Sawyer Swing. Oh. And that is a crucial strikeout. Got him to chase wow. there on a pitch borderline off the plate for swinging strike three. But and the Admirals do play to run to cut the deficit down to one, five minute. to four, going into the top of the seven. All right, we are back here in the top half of the seventh inning, about to begin. Nine hitter Griffin Smith due up for AACS to face Caden Blank in his third inning of relief for the Admirals. Yeah, Caden Blank pitching a great inning last inning. Uh, three strikeouts, the last one being all three swinging strikes. As I'm being harassed by a wasp here on Admiral TV. Looks like a green hornet. Let's go Green Hornets. Shout out to all Green Hornets football players out there. As that is taken for ball one. Gotta work, gotta gotta work ahead. Wow. There's a great strike call. Jason Martino showing his love there for that strike call. Love for the game, love for the bench, love for the team, love for stat. He loves that class. As Doesn't might know. be struggling to get some readings here on Caden Blank's pitches. Here's the pitch from Caden Blank, and that's an a fastball away. Out it. 2-2 two, two the count. Oh As here comes Jason Martino to go get that fastball. Jason Martino with the textbook hey, foul ball retrieval. John. John. That's how good. That's how good. Yeah, I thought so. Up, <laughs> said John, so he made us all turn. That's yeah, this is. Oh, ground there's ball. a ground ball, and that's fielded cleanly by Andy Blank with the out at first base. I right, need that? to get through this part of the lineup as some confusion here with the with the three John broadcasts. Is the name John was said, no one no one knew who it was directed to. Mr. Maggart, the, uh, the man that he is. Wears a lot of hats, he's known around town. Local passerby identified him. Who was that? Uh, hold on, that swung oh. on. Oh, and finds a diving, doubt. Double diving uh, attempt there in the infield. That was the dad of a, uh, of a kid that played with my son a few years ago. Hmm. Baseball connections. Yep. As that brings one runner on for AACS. Now yep. Ryan Jones stepping in. 0 for 1 officially on the day with intentional walk as sack flyer RBI the fifth. Here's the pitch from Caden. That's that it. is a fly ball into right field, a diving catch there. Nice job there by Max Barney to corral that. Max Barney is still in the Your protege. Yeah, yeah, that's my mentee. That's precisely. Nice. Two outs there for the I Admirals. I taught him well. You know, can thank Esposito for that one. 
and I'll say the Admirals have done a really good job against Jones today, really neutralizing him. And as there goes the runner, as this hits the center. High, high uh, fly ball oh, of the that, That's down. Andy Blank now has it. Now ACS with another runner in scoring position on third. Admirals cannot afford to give up another run here. That's just unfortunate there. With a the runner in motion, second base went to go cover the bag there. And if he hadn't abandoned his position, that would have been an easy pop out third out of the inning for Blank to corral. But instead, the ball drops into shallow right field. Runners on the corners for Jacob Crisanto. Okay, they're going to intentionally walk Crisanto. So that'll move to bases loaded. But they want to do that so they face Roman Cobb, the freshman 238 hitter. Yeah, so Admirals banking, banking on and out here. You know, a walk does bring in a run. This is purely a Caden Blank battle. Outside. Oh. Outside. First. Good job. Good job for Maiden there to get, get to that. You know, something gets past him here, that's that's a run. Just pitch for Caden Blank. Swing it on. 82 on that. You, know, you expect Caden to work with that fastball. It's worked with him a lot before, especially last inning. There's the pitcher, Caden Blank, and they're going to send him home there. I'm not sure what the plan was, but he's out. So they try to steal home. Oh. Just straight up steal home. Straight up steal home. All right. I, 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 and then he tried to argue the call after being clearly tagged out. Yeah. I, saying he couldn't get under it. She was I don't know. In hey, interesting. interesting. Try to slide. Like, what was that? Interesting call there to try and. And for the third time today, Roman Cobb was up at the plate when a third out of the inning was recorded wow. on the base pass. That's not something you see I, every day, folks. I guess that's why the intentional walk. They just knew it was going to be a third out. So, um, so anyway, we're going to go into the middle of the seventh inning. The Admirals need one to tie, two to win. All right, we are back here. Home half of the seventh inning. The Admirals need one to tie, two to win. Matt Fisher digging in for the Admirals to face the hard-throwing Sawyer Shepard for ACS. And this is just great baseball here. Up, up at the top of the lineup, down by one, you know, hoping for something special. Here comes Fisher. Oh, 82 on that offering. Here comes pitch from Sawyer. Check swing, strike. 84 on that pitch. Catches the very top of the zone there. Here's pitch from Sawyer. Swung on, foul tip. That lands well behind us.
Here comes the pitch of Sawyer. Low. Good take. What was the speed on that, you see? It didn't register. Mm. Didn't read. Interesting pitch and miss there. 2-2 two -two count. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. And that is a hard hit uh, foul ball. And that's dangerous. All good nice foul. Yep. Left fielder gave up on that one really early. I feel like he, that was gettable. If he if he really hustled that, it might have been it might have gotten close, but gives Fisher another life here. Everything's been fastball here. You wonder at some point is he going to try to go to the curveball? Here's the pitch from Sawyer, and that is a Hayden's fly ball field. hit out into left field. I feel like and it's a the sliding catch. catch there from the left fielder. Admirals have two more outs to get two more runs. Good swing by Fisher. Good play by the left fielder. Unfortunately for the Admirals, it results in the first out of the inning. Ben Campion now coming to the dish. He's 0 for 2 with a walk this afternoon. 409 hitter. Admirals need something out of him. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. That's uh, 86 on that. I'm hearing talks from the dugout that Jason Martino might be going in. I did hear that. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. That's not again. Same Ball. spot. Let's see Sa if he, similar let's speed. Let's see if he gets into that little wild streak like he had last inning. I don't know if we need that. We need base runners. So we're kicking up the dirt. A lot of the rubber exposed. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. Oh, way out. Way high. high. Could we be seeing... You know, a little bit of that control mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, he definitely seems to be playing with his his landing his landing spot. It looks like there's a little crater there that he's not really liking. He's set up on the first base side. Oh, a very delayed call by the home plate umpire. He wasn't real sure on that call. Yeah, makes it three one to count. Yep. Here comes the pitch from Sawyer. Upstairs. And there it is. Ben Campion advancing to first base. Second walk of the afternoon for Campion. More importantly, the tying run for your Admirals, the go-ahead run in the form of Aiden Shadlick stepping up to the plate. Shadlick with the lone home run that the Admirals have hit this year. Strike. 85 on that one. How you could be approaching the There's pitch from Sawyer, and there's the steal from Ben Campion, and they're going to throw. Low, throw. And that's way over. It's thrown into shallow center field, backed up nicely there Back up. by the second baseman there, but a stolen base for Ben Campion, a critical 90 feet for the Admirals, and now puts the tying run into scoring position with one away and a 1 1 count. Pitch from Sawyer. And there's a hard hit ground ball. That's the roof! Here comes Ben They're sending him home. And we and have ourselves a tie ball, ball game as the ball gets by the, the like first baseman and, and he takes the extra 90 it. feet. Shadlock feeling himself right now. And the dugout just loving every moment. An RBI single off the bat of Aiden Shadlock brings home Ben Campion for the tying run. The ball gets by the cut first baseman, Bala, and that allows Shadlock to move up 90 feet. And now the winning run is in scoring position with one away for his younger brother, Brendan Shadlock. I mean, this is just great baseball right here. When he run on second, his brother to hit in his other brother for the win. Runner on second. Here's a pitch from Sawyer here. Strike. 86 on that fastball for strike one. So we're kicking it up a notch. Admirals have two outs to work with. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. Ball away. 87 on that. That I think that's the hardest pitch we've seen thrown today. Yeah, he hit an 89 earlier in the in this in the last inning, early in the early inning outing. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. Swung on and into it's a long fly ball out to right field, and they're going to camp under that. That's caught. Tagging brings the scoring Tagging run up. to third. There it is. Now. 
One well, base hit away from a one ball game for the Admirals. Or a wild pitch. Caden Blank or a pass ball. That's true. But anything, anything for this 90 feet right here. And Caden Blank, one for two with two runs scored, a single his last time up. Here's pitch from Sawyer. That's foul tips by Caden Blank. He got a piece of it. Be quick, need contact. Jason Martino offers words of encouragement from the dugout. <laughs> All right, here we go. On a curveball. Here's the pitch from Sawyer. And that's, that's a grounder. Yeah, and that's it. That's going to happen here. This and that ball's going to hit first. That he beats it out. That is the win and run. And they storm the field with a walk-off run by Caden Blank. Caden Blank, he was doing it on the mound. And finally, he does it at the plate. Admirals. Get the win over ACS six to they five. Storm the field. Way to hustle out of the box there from Caden Blank. He knew he was going to have to put the Jets on to beat that out. Great play by the shortstop to come up fire in there, but not in time as the Admirals plate two off of AECS's ace to win it in the bottom half of the seventh. Wow. I mean, what a ball game that was. So with that effort, your Admirals improved to six and nine on the year, five and three in conference play. AACS drops to five and ten overall, three and five in MIAB action. Huge win for the Admirals as they have another game tomorrow on the road at Indian Creek before they return back to Kinder on Thursday as they host St. John's Catholic Prep at 4 p.m. A broadcast you will see here on Admiral TV, but of course we would love to see you out here at Kinder to support the ads. Great job from the from the Admirals to come back late in the game against ACS's ace. Gentlemen, what do you think? What do you think of our first broadcast of two student commentators for Admiral TV and baseball? What do you think? I mean, you can't ask for a much better game than that. It was back and forth all game. Admirals got out to the early lead with ACS getting back tied within one inning. Then the Admirals fall, fell behind just to bring it all the way back in the last inning for the walk-off win. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, you know, good baseball on both sides. And uh, walk away with the win. Not much more you can ask for there. All right, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Mr. Maggart. I'm John McCone. And I'm John Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. Signing off from Kinder Farm Park, MIAB Conference Baseball. Your Seven Admirals with the walk-off victory over AACS 6-5. to five. Pound it, noggin.